All right, we're back on. Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here is the news read for the day from the Associated Press and other Native American news sources. Last week, we uh, read a short notice about the candidacy of Elder Lottie Cootie, who is running for the position of Principal Chief of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. We said she was 82 years old, but that is not the case. In the story, we mentioned that Cootie's run invoked the memory of Alice Brown Davis, a notable female leader of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. It was Davis who was 82 when she passed away in 1935. We apologize for uh, aging a candidate like that. Two Wisconsin men who rigged a casino giveaway contest to win $10,000 could soon be headed to prison. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago declined to throw out the convictions of Darwin Moore and Bruce Knudsen. The two men were found guilty of conspiring to steal money from a tribal casino. Prosecutors say Moore and Knudsen made counterfeit forms to enter their names thousands of times in a $50,000 giveaway contest in 2005 at a Ho-Chunk Casino in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Their names accounted for more than 60% of the 15,000 contest entries and Knudsen won a drawing for $10,000. A federal judge found Knudsen and Moore guilty and sentenced them to 10 months in prison. Interior Secretary Ken Salazar says $500 million in federal stimulus money will go to tribes for schools, housing, infrastructure improvements, loans, and job programs on reservations. Salazar's announcement last week does not include funding for additional officers on reservation, though it does include more than $7 million for repairs and maintenance to tribal detention centers. He made his announcement at the United Tribes Technical College in Bismarck, North Dakota, after a private meeting with tribal leaders. The Interior Secretary said Indian Country faces serious challenges and President Obama wants to help American Indians have a new beginning. He said the Interior Department plans to invest at least another $2.5 billion in Indian Country during the Obama administration. A sister act took home some awards from the 21st Annual Minnesota Book Awards. Author Louise Erdrich and her sister, poet Hyde Erdrich, were both winners in St. Paul. Louise Erdrich won for her novel, The Plague of Doves, based on the lynching of three American Indians in North uh, Dakota more than a century ago. The book was a recent finalist for a, Pulit for a Pulitzer Prize in fiction. Hyde Erdrich won for her collection of poetry, National Monuments. Nearly 320 books were nominated for Minnesota Book Awards this year, and 32 books were selected as finalists. The deaths of 11 elders of the Kalespel tribe within three months of each other caused members there to worry about the survival of their language. It is said if we lose our language, we're not going to be a tribe anymore, said Francis Kulia, one of more than 64 speakers of Southern Interior Salish who gathered for a language summit at Spokane Falls Community College in Washington State. No one can remember a gathering of so many speakers of the first language of the inland Northwest. There are few fluent speakers left of the language once heard from Vernon, British Columbia to Vantage, Washington, and from Wanachi to the Bitterroot Valley of Montana. Uh, our elders taught us that we were like brothers because of our language, said Coeur d'Alene tribal member Felix Aripa. Also attending were speakers of the Kalespel, Spokane, Colville, Okanagan, Wanachi, Columbian, Pendorle, and the Montana Salish. Not represented at the conference were speakers of the three northern interior Salish uh, dialects, Shuswap, Thompson, and uh, Luliut, all from Canada. Four students have received $1,000 scholarships each toward college from the Crazy Horse Scholarship Program. Josie Ann Green of Wilmot plans to attend Minnesota State University at Moorhead. Karen Zocker of Anchorage is going to the University of Anchorage. David Mashad from Pine Ridge will be a junior at South Dakota State University, and Tristan Wolfname of Busby, Montana will use his award toward studies at the University of Montana where he intends to transfer in the fall. The scholarships were awarded recently at the annual Native American Journalism Conference, uh, Career Conference at the Crazy Horse Memorial in uh, South Dakota. 
The program has awarded more than $1 million since its inception in 1978 by sculptor Korzak Zilikowski and his wife Ruth. In addition to the be uh, beat of powwow drums and harmonious vocals, Native American basketball invitationals Chasing the Sun 10K in powwow, attendees, attendees will also hear the loud roar of motorcycle engines as the Brothers from the Res Motorcycle Group will make a special trek from the Gila River Reservation to the University of Phoenix Stadium in support of NABI's event in Glendale, Arizona, May 1st through the 3rd. The Brothers from the Res are a motorcycle riding group of Native American veterans and veteran supporters from the Gila River Indian community. The Brothers from the Res provide support for veterans of the Armed Forces and Indian Community's efforts toward veteran recognition and support. The bike group received their name after they volunteered as security support for the Nam Jam 2005, an annual event honoring Vietnam veterans in Tucson, Arizona. Since 2005, the brothers have served as security and motorcycle escorts for funerals for fallen veterans, welcome home celebrations for vets, and other events such as the Lori Piestawa Memorial and the Ride to the Ruins Rally. Other tribes such as the Lakota, Seminole, Seneca, and Diné are also represented in the Brothers Association. Ceremonial elders from, the U from Utah and California are joining the Mohawk and Chippewa of Ontario, Canada to unite in a defense of the sacred Alston Aquifer and surface springs of Tiny Township, Ontario. Arnold Thomas from Utah as well as elders Robert John Knapp from California G. Melda Johnston and Wilmer Najawan of Cape Croker, Ontario are demanding that Premier Dalton McGunty immediately rescind his government's approval to create a garbage dump at the Sacred Service Springs of the Alston Aquifer near Georgian Bay. Ironically, Premier, uh, Premier Gunty's Ministry of the Environment itself has uh, given approval to a commercial activity that could see the pristine waters of the aquifer drained this very spring. We as Ojibwe and Chippewa people need to establish a relationship by making offerings to the water in a big way because of all the abuse the water has seen, says Cape Croker elder G. Melda Johnston, noting that people have been living on this land, noting that her people have been living on this land for thousands of years. Our people have been struggling hard to educate Canada about the sacredness of the Great Lakes, Georgian Bay, and Mother Earth, she said. For more information, you can contact Danny Beaton at Beaten Danny at yahoo.ca for Canada. If you happen to be in Washington, D.C. Wednesday, you can check out a bra uh, brown bag luncheon discussion entitled The Round Table Strategy Session on Native American Sports Mascots. The session will be facilitated by Suzanne Schoenharjo, president of the Morning Star Institute, and will be held from 12 until 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time there, uh, at 245 2nd Street Northeast in Washington, D.C. The event is hosted by Car the Karen Wingard Maniel, the United Methodist Church Friends Committee on National Legislation, and the General Commission on Religion and Race. You can call Emily Nelms at 202-495-2948 if you want a reservation for your presence. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our underwriters for helping us with this broadcast today and for you for joining with us again. Miigwech.